If you're anything like me, odds are you've been waiting quite some time now for a new MMO to come along that's totally engrossing. Something that immediately hooks you because it's fun to play, the world is immersive, there are novel elements that make the game feel new and exciting. On top of that, all your friends are playing, it's the only thing you want to talk about and the only thing you care to do with your free time and maybe even much of your not so free time as well. You know the feeling very well actually because it's happened to you before. You can actually look back and point to various games in your past that conjured up this exact situation. But it's been a while, maybe too long even. And you know, that's because there are never any new MMOs coming out, right? Like we just keep playing the same games over and over again. Well, what if I told you there are actually over 40 new MMOs and MMO lights being developed at this very moment? You'd probably say I'm full of it, but I'm not. Look at this list. Every single game here is confirmed to be in development right now. Many of them even claim to be releasing in the next one to two years. On one hand, you could actually say there's never been a better time to be an MMO fan. I'm fairly certain actually there has at least never been a time where we've had so many new MMOs in active development that we were aware of. Even excluding all of the MMO lights, there are at least 30 of the more traditionally structured MMOs on the list and there's almost certainly some games I missed or forgot. I mean, it is nuts. But at the same time, how many of these games are most of us going to be playing for more than a week or two? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Probably not a lot of them. And, and boy, is that... Well, that sure is something and a bit disappointing, right? Like from my perspective as a player, knowing full well many of the pitfalls most of these games will stumble into, the result of which being, yeah, I'll probably just play them for a few days, maybe a week or two, then I'll be done. It's really hard for that reason to get too excited for most of what we see here. I still follow it and I am interested in these games and I will check them out, don't get me wrong, but I would be pleasantly surprised if even one or two of these games actually deliver on that feeling and experience I know myself and probably many of you out there are looking for. And that is not me saying that these are necessarily going to be bad games. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that playing a game for just a couple of weeks is even a bad thing. In fact, it's almost preferable in a lot of cases. We swim in a never-ending glut of games. There are more new games released every year than I even have time to play. All of this added onto the backlog of games that I'll probably never find the time to get to either. And doing gaming stuff is my full-time job. People who have other full-time jobs, it's certainly even much, much worse. As I've talked about before, there's just not enough time to play all of the games, even all of the good games, let alone some of the mediocre and bad ones. So yeah, not every game needs to last forever. Most games won't, it's unrealistic. And I don't even really want that from most of my games, most of the games that I play. But man, when one comes along that really sinks its hooks in, it is something else. I love it. It's the it's one of the experiences that makes gaming as a hobby be so very special, barring that that experience also doesn't simultaneously destroy every other aspect of my life. Happens on occasion. I, I, I've i been there. Don't worry, guys. I, I get you. And you know, from MMOs, our expectation level is certainly higher than just a few days to a week, especially with how big and expansive these games are supposed to be and how long they spend in development. We go in wanting a lot more than that, but the fact of the matter is most things won't deliver that. And even if most games could, you would only play but a fraction of them. So we are just looking for those pinnacle experiences in gaming to come along. So realistically, Looking at that list that I showed you earlier, um, yes, I don't expect many of these games will keep me around for very long. Most of this list I will play for a few days to a week to check them out, to have my fun or not have fun, and then I'll move on. Will any of them last longer than that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, even if I had to make a prediction, it is very hard to tell. You really just never know what game will come along at just the right time with just the right elements to be something that you sink your teeth into. Uh, that sort of guesswork is what investors do all day professionally, deciding where to place their money, where to put their bets on which game will become the next Minecraft, the next Fortnite, the next Call of Duty, you name it. It ain't easy to predict this kind of thing. If it was, we'd have a whole lot more millionaires. Uh, it's even harder with indie games. Like very few people predicted the success of say Valheim or Vampire Survivors ahead of time, but when they launched and people got to play and word got around, it was immediately pretty clear that 
they there was something special there. The safest bets, it, like if we're playing it safe, it's always going to be some some of those big budget games, the AAA games. They at the very least tend to have a better than average chance when it comes to many of the crowdfunded or indie MMOs on the list here. Uh, as we all know, though, AAA budget doesn't always mean AAA gameplay experience. It just sets the bar a little higher for what we can expect from the visuals, from the animation quality, from the size of the world, from the game's polish, all of those things. The bar is just a little higher. And for that reason, yes, it's got a better chance. And it's for that reason that uh, I've got higher hopes for a lot of these unannounced MMOs from the bigger studios. We're talking Riot Games, League of Legends based MMO, the MMO from the Elder Scrolls Online Studio, Zenimax Online Studios. Uh, they're making a brand new MMO. We've got the Horizon themed MMO from Sony. We've got Blizzard Survival Game. And then there is the Laugh If You Want, but yes, the Amazon Lord of the Rings MMO. Hey man, if they can take parts of New World and craft that into a Lord of the Rings setting and just make it better. I mean, again, like with most of these games, I'll definitely check it out. That said, any of these could fail miserably. Tr again, because AAA budget doesn't mean AAA user and experience. It could be garbage. And a few of these likely will fail miserably. Don't say Amazon. Okay, fine. You can say Amazon. They deserve it. <laughs> but again, um, I would say that I have better than average uh, expectations from these games compared to uh, the slew of the crowdfunded and indie MMOs that are on the list. I will say I do also have uh, some hopes for a lot of these MMO lights. Uh, some of them I think are quite promising. Near the top would be Dune Awakening. I love Warframe enough to be very interested in what they do with Soulframe. And I also think Nightingale seems pretty darn promising. That one's uh, very narrowly made this list. Of of uh, what we call an MMO. But anyways, but just about every MMO light actually that you see here, I am interested in playing for at least a little while. When it comes to that main list though, of those confirmed more what we would consider traditional MMOs, ones that kind of live up to the general infrastructure and what we think of as a classic MMO RPG like World of Warcraft and everything in that vein, that main list of 30 or so games I mean, that is a massive grab bag. It's really hard to say. I do expect a majority of them will fall into the couple of weeks tops category. That's what what I would expect with maybe a few of them breaking through beyond that. But I don't have a ton of long-term hope for most of these, unfortunately enough to say. Yes, even the online MMO fanboy poster child that is Ashes of Creation, even that, I mean, I hope it's good, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really not placing my bets as of yet that it's going to be like a savior of the genre. It will be probably a niche popular game for at least a few months uh, for that crowd. One, two, five years down the road is it going to maintain a sizable player base who knows but who knows with most of this stuff we're all it, it is all just guesswork but but i mean i hope they're all good i hope every game's good every game on this list surprise me please all be amazing pinnacle mmo experiences that's not gonna happen but i would i would love it so how do we get here like seriously, we got a list of 40 MMOs, a good chunk of which launching in the next one to two years. And many of these games took, you know, anywhere from five to seven to, like I said, over 10 years to develop. And I'm not expecting a vast majority of them to last me more than a couple of weeks of playtime. Well, there's a lot of reasons and a lot of ways and explanations to how we got there. I'm sure you've seen the slew of YouTube video essays talking about why gaming today sucks. The videos that basically more or less boil down to, hey, things were kind of better when I was a child and had fewer responsibilities. Well, yeah, no duh. Uh, when it comes to this particular topic of gaming sucks today, I am not a full-blown doomer on this discussion point. I think gaming is still amazing. And in fact, in, matter, in many ways, a lot better than it's ever been. The quality and the expansiveness of so many games, there's a lot of high quality games coming on every single year. And it's a real exciting time to play and be a fan of this hobby. And as I mentioned earlier, there are way too many good games that you just don't have time to play. There are so many games that people rave about, that people are obsessed with, that people play for years and years on end that I've barely or never touched and likely I know I will eventually go to the grave never touching a lot of these amazing games. So we can't say that gaming sucks because it's just an expanding library, except for the ones that get shut down. That's another video, right? I would say that in general, gaming is in a really good spot. But yes, in a lot of ways, many parts of it do suck, or at the least gaming and how we approach gaming and the games industry, it's quite different than how it was when we were a weak kinders. Games in general are different. If I were to try to distill it into like one sentiment, I would say that games used to feel like 
games developed primarily for the sake of delivering an experience to the player, which they would sell you. Yes, this was always a business. Typically, there would be a single upfront cost. Maybe later they would sell expansions. So yes, you had to pay, of course, but the game still felt like it came first for a long time, for much of my childhood and my adolescence, and even when I was a young adult. Many games today feel a lot more like they're just vehicles for monetization with the hope being for like the MMO and live service genres that you will stick around and keep playing and paying more over time. Now, sure, they still need to make a game that you enjoy that, that keeps you around playing in order to monetize you further. But monetization being at the forefront of the entire endeavor, I think has left a lot of modern games feeling that very way. Like it permeates into the design and bleeds into the user experience. And this isn't some anti-business, anti-profit rant either. People got to get paid. It's how these things get made in the first place, even back in the day. But I will say that it did feel in the past like the games were being made primarily by people who loved gaming and wanted to craft their own unique experiences for other people who love gaming to enjoy. Now though, because the industry is so massive, it's like the biggest entertainment industry bar none, right? It feels like most of the people involved in the endeavor of making games are just here for the buck. And no, I'm not talking about the developers at all. It's well known. In fact, game dev pays far below what most of these people could make if they went into other industries. But whatever their passion is for the hobby and for the craft of making games, it does seem like it gets pushed to the wayside when the higher ups, the ones paying the bills, chime in to what sort of systems the game needs to have, what methods they need to employ to keep people playing. When they're hiring psychologists to develop these properly paced out intermittent reward schedules to keep us on that dopamine drip, to keep us playing, to keep us swiping the card. Boy, lots of fun. Yeah. The systems games need to have the methods they use to keep us playing and how they're going to cash in on all of that. It is a big part of the reason. And like I said, it, it really bleeds into the experience of the game and takes away from the game itself. It is why when something like Elden Ring comes along, it feels like a breath of fresh air for so many people. I'll just speak for myself. It felt like I was stepping back in time. I just got a game. The game was great. I played the game. Damn, damn, what year is it? What, what year did Elden Ring come out? 2000? Of course, there's a lot of things that made Elden Ring great. There are plenty of uh, YouTube video essays about that very topic. All of those things combined with the simplicity of the transaction. I give you money, you give me good game. I enjoy good game and have fun. Nice doing business with you. No cash shop, no, mo no further monetization, no season pass, none of that stuff. It's just the game, the game's there. The UI isn't intrusive trying to get me to go to the shop. I'm not logging in and seeing 17 pop-ups that show me the recent activities that I can, some of which pay money for. It's just a game that I hop in and I play. And all of that combined with Elden Ring being a good game, oh man, it was definitely a big part of, at least again, speaking personally, what made the experience of playing Elden Ring feel so refreshing against the sea of modern game design. Beyond games being different, the internet's different as well. Uh, for one, it didn't actually really exist when I first started gaming. So if I wanted news or info on the latest NES game, I had to typically get that from a magazine in most cases. Eventually, yeah, we got home internet, but gaming sites were a rare commodity. Usually what we were talking about were like fan pages. I made pages on Angel Fire for like Warcraft 3 or going to forums where people would just talk about the games that they enjoyed. But today with the constant internet access, with our phones in our pockets, how you learn about games, how you follow updates, how you get news, the guides, the tips, the full playthroughs on YouTube, learning about data mined information and leaks from YouTube videos, streamers who are speed rushing and beating the game in the first day for the entire world to see, the arc of first hearing about a game to when you actually sit down and play the game, it is way, way different now than it was, say, back when I was a kid and I walked down to my friend's house and he told me about this new game called EverQuest that his mom just bought him for his birthday. And then I sat down for eight hours watching him play and enjoyed every minute. The way we consume gaming as a hobby, the way we follow gaming as a hobby is way different. It's way more tuned in and is way more oversaturated. And I think that also plays a big role to the enjoyment that we get the moment we actually get to sit down and finally play the game. But just as, uh, if not even in many ways more important in my opinion, is the fact that yes, games are different, the games industry is different, yes, the presence of the internet is different, 
But lastly, we're different. The way that we approach games, the way we consume games, and what we expect from games today compared to when we were younger is just vastly different in most every measure. The frequency, the intensity, the speed. We're all also just better at games today than we were in the past, which you would hope, obviously, for those of us who have racked up like decades of experience in the hobby. As we learned not too long ago with the release of Classic WoW, World of Warcraft wasn't a terribly difficult game. It's just that at the time when we started playing in 2000, 2004, everything sucked. Our computers sucked and struggled to maintain a good frame rate, causing us to always stand in the fire. The internet sucked, causing frequent lag spikes and dropped connections. And yes, we sucked. We were just bad at playing MMOs and probably bad at playing games in general. And for today, all of that has improved. The games run better, well, for the most part, barring any bad PC ports. Internet speeds are way better, so we've got steady connections more of the time. And we also have nearly 20 more years time playing games than we did when we first booted up vanilla World of Warcraft. With time comes experience, with that experience, comes a loss of novelty. As far as I'm concerned, lack of no novelty is one of the primary driving factors to why so many people can say that gaming isn't fun anymore compared to when it was when they were younger. The more games you play, the more you see. The more you see, the less novel new game experiences are. Let me ask you, have you ever found yourself sitting down and playing a game for the first time and thinking, it feels like I've already played this. It's partially true because so many games borrow ideas, structure, gameplay, systems, and features from one another that many times they all start to bleed together. And when things aren't novel, it is very hard to keep you engaged and to hold your attention. We crave variety and novelty just in general, but this also applies to our hobbies and gaming. And both of these things are massive drivers in the motivation and desire to continue to pursue something too, in this case, continue playing a game to stay engaged and, and, and spend more time with it. And the fact is, the more experience you have, the more games you've played, the harder and harder it becomes for new games to surprise you. Because yes, in most cases, you have seen it all before. Even if you sit down and a brand new one of the games on this list, a brand new MMO just launches, you sit down for the first time, you're probably going to get some serious deja vu. You're going to think, oh boy, I've already done this fetch quest. I've already spoke to this NPC. I've already gone through this training. I've already fought this boss. You haven't technically, but you may as well have because it's all so similar enough to one to one another to might as well be the same. And it is really with that in mind and the key importance the novelty plays into getting enjoyment out of gaming. It is because of that, I try to remember some newly released game that feels super old hat to me is going to be some kid's first time with the genre, first time with the game type, first time with features and mechanics that will leave a lasting impression on that person. And I find it helpful when it comes to trying to enjoy games and trying to continue to enjoy the hobby after so many years, doubly so, being that this has been my career following games and playing games for uh, coming up on 13 years now I've had here on YouTube. I've spent a lot of time playing games. I've spent a lot of time talking about games, a lot of time covering games to try to really continue to enjoy it after all this time. Even if everything isn't entirely novel, it can be tough, but I think mindset does play a big, big role. As for these upcoming MMOs, the game on the, the games on the list that we talked about here today, I'll obviously still hope that the developers themselves, the ones in charge of creating these games, do manage to craft something to create an engaging, immersive, and a novel enough experience that even someone uh, as jaded old gamer as myself can be entertained with for at least some time. Although I still, of course, hope that every once in a while we get a game that comes along that does really craft a super unique experience that rekindles some of that flame and has us sort of go back to the first time we experienced whatever your equivalent to World of Warcraft is to me. And I also want to say, if you are struggling with finding games that keep you engaged and games that you're interested in and you're not wanting to go back to games that you've already played, look no further than games that other people rave about. Uh, I think that e a lot of times we look on the horizon to what games that haven't been released that are upcoming and we put a lot of hope in those while neglecting a lot of these super popular games with huge fan bases, games that are critically acclaimed, 
games that are cult classics. There's a lot of games out there I know for myself that I've yet to touch that people rave about, and I'm sure you're the same way too in the MMO genre and in other genres. And if you're having a hard time finding motivation and finding excitement in gaming, try checking those games out. Try checking those older games that a lot of people, you've heard people speak about over the years that you just never got around to playing. That's probably my best advice for you, but also for myself. That said, we keep our fingers crossed and we hope for the best for the new stuff on the horizon. And we'll see which games on this list deliver. That does it for me today. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.